King Charles's wife, however, was disregarded. Hello, with all the regal splendor, we warmly welcome you to the Royal Family News Channel. Join us for another enchanting journey into the world of royalty. Now, let's get to the video. People, King Charles recently delivered a speech that has been covered by calm Stephanie Petit discloses that King Charles reveals the specifics of how he proposed to Kate Middleton, his cherished daughter-in-law, during their time in Kenya. During a state banquet, King Charles conveyed his family's deep connection to Kenya. The connection between the British royal family and Kenya is profound, as evidenced by Prince William's choice of Kenya as the location to propose to Kate Middleton. King Charles addressed attendees at a ceremonial dinner in Kenya during his official trip with Queen Camilla. This visit signifies the monarch's inaugural journey to a Commonwealth nation since ascending the throne in September 2022 following the passing of his mother, Queen Elizabeth. During his address, he recounted a few of the experiences that his relatives had while in the African nation. King Charles remembered the momentous proposal of his son, the Prince of Wales, to his now cherished daughter in law, which took place within the vicinity of Mount Kenya in 2010. The announcement of the upcoming royal wedding was later revealed to the public, followed by William and Kate's first interview together, and detailed the origins of the proposal. Prince William stated that all men understand the necessity of having a particular level of drive to kickstart themselves. I had devised a plan. Afterwards, it was a strong sensation of perfect alignment in Africa. The sight was truly breathtaking. Despite having known each other since their college days, Kate was taken aback when she received the proposal. During the engagement interview, she exclaimed that the occurrence completely caught her off guard. Prince William once again discussed his decision to propose in Kenya during a Buckingham Palace event in January 2020, which aimed to commemorate the strong bond between the United Kingdom and Africa. As William spoke, Kate observed his deep affection for the African continent. Soon after our mother's passing, my father brought my brother and me to this location. And while considering the ideal location to ask Catherine for her hand in marriage. I couldn't find a better location than Kenya to propose. Prince William and Kate tied the knot in April 2011 and became parents to three children. Prince George, aged 10, Princess Charlotte, aged 8, and Prince Louis, aged 5. At 74 years old, King Charles bestowed the titles of Prince and Princess of Wales upon his son and daughter-in-law immediately following his ascension to the throne. During the state banquet on Tuesday, King Charles made a thoughtful mention of Kenya's significant role in the past. When it came to her mother's ascension, Queen Elizabeth took a leisurely break to observe the wild fauna. Kenya was about to embark on an extensive tour while her sick father, King George, remained in England. However, on the 6th of 1952, George passed away peacefully during his sleep, resulting in his eldest daughter, who was 25 years old, becoming the new ruler. King Charles expressed that his late mother, the Queen, had a fondness for Kenya and its people, which is widely acknowledged. In 1952, she came as a princess, but departed as a queen. Reading her diary from that trip is incredibly touching, as she expressed her desire to fully embrace every remarkable aspect of Kenya's landscapes. I am truly grateful for the immense support that Kenya provided during that challenging period, and words cannot express my appreciation enough. According to Charles, a decade afterwards, my deceased father, the Duke of Edinburgh, participated in the festivities commemorating the independence of Kenya. To commemorate the event, Her Late Majesty corresponded with President Jomo Kenyatta, expressing her genuine desire for Kenya's prosperity and the abundant presence of peace and satisfaction among its citizens, with the guidance of God. During our coronation year, my wife and I were deeply honored that our inaugural official visit to a Commonwealth nation would be in Kenya, holding significant importance for both of us. King Charles expressed his immense satisfaction in reviving the connection between the United Kingdom and Kenya, a nation that has always held great significance for his family. Today, he expressed in Swahili that he does not feel like someone who is just visiting. A comprehensive report has been compiled on King Charles's recent visit to Kenya, 
including insightful excerpts from his speech. How does this relate to narcissism? To begin with, King Charles, who is a narcissist, is masking his true self by delivering a speech expressing gratitude towards different individuals, creating an impression of a compassionate person. Therefore, it effectively handles the outer appearance and manipulates both the audience present during the speech and those who come across it later on. He obtains energy from the reactions. He cleverly coordinates his visit with his son and daughter-in-law by expressing admiration for them and the meaningful event of the proposal. Therefore, King Charles, once more, is driven by the main objectives that prompt him to deliver this speech using the language he employs. However, the wife of this individual is facing several challenges with regards to this speech. To start with, her name is not even brought up. Some may argue that King Charles intentionally ignored mentioning Harry and his wife, but it is likely irrelevant since the event took place in Kenya, where William proposed to Kate. Since Harry didn't propose to his wife in that place, there's no reason to bring them up. Therefore, it is highly improbable for King Charles to be deliberately snubbing anyone. In simple terms, Harry and his wife were not important enough to be mentioned or controlled. William and Kate caught the attention of King Charles, prompting his desire to exercise dominion over them due to his narcissistic tendencies. In a harmless manner, he expressed positive sentiments towards them. Most people would observe this situation and conclude that you did not mention the person's spouse because it was unrelated to your involvement. The union occurred between William, to be exact, and Kate, she is his partner. This event occurred within the borders of Kenya. The reason why they were mentioned is because Charles is currently in Kenya, which brought them to his mind. It's not a deliberate act of disrespect towards you. However, this excuse won't be accepted by this person's spouse. You see, she has an insatiable need to be the focal point in all aspects, due to her narcissistic tendencies. And even though it may not be applicable, that is of no consequence. Her self-obsession will supersede that. If you were to tell her, hey, this person's spouse, don't overreact about it. Do not feel frustrated if you have been overlooked. It is clear why your name was not brought up. You failed to become engaged, and the proposal didn't happen in Kenya. The event was held in honor of William and Kate. That is the reason they were referred to in New Warren. She simply wouldn't accept it, and Nelson would refuse it. It is evident that he consistently shows a preference towards them. He has always held her in such high regard. From the very start, I was despised. Rewriting the past. I had no hope from the start. Victimhood, pity play, the individual's narcissism will lead her to firmly believe that William and Catherine have always been the ones who were adored and favored, disregarding the true significance of why they were mentioned in the first place. This speech presents a potential issue for the spouse, as it did not acknowledge her presence despite no apparent need to do so. It causes her pain. She hopes that Charles will mention her. Despite the lack of justification or relevance, it remains inconsequential to mention her. As the wife of this individual, she merits acknowledgement and discussion. Additionally, the issue arises as he not only neglects to acknowledge the presence of this person's spouse, but he also showers admiration on both William, the individual who slipped away, and Catherine, the rival. This results in an intensified harm inflicted on this individual's spouse. Not only is she not acknowledged, but she is also left out of the conversation praising Catherine as my cherished daughter-in-law. The wife inquires loudly, what about myself? I am also married to his son. Her fury burns brightly. Naturally, she will express her grievances to Harry, unconsciously attempting to exert her influence and Harry's reply will inevitably revolve around the predictable behaviors exhibited by his relatives. He may realize that mentioning it wasn't necessary, but he likely won't make the effort to explain because he understands it doesn't lead to any solution. It's simpler for him to agree that his family is terrible, this incident showcases his dad's unpleasantness, and the decision to move to California was justified. Blah blah blah. The situation deteriorates even further for the spouse of this individual. 
This article acknowledges the mention of Diana, Princess of Wales, and William's heartfelt connection to the African continent. After our mother passed away, my father brought my brother and me to this particular location. And when it came to choosing the most suitable location to propose to Catherine, I couldn't find a more perfect place than Kenya to get down on my knee. In light of this, it is worth noting that the wife firmly believes in her unique gift of communicating with the spirit of Diana, Princess of Wales. Thus, her mentioning of Diana in connection to the demise. The location that Harry and William sought solace in following their mother's passing also triggers a feeling of disrespect within their spouse's thoughts. I invoke the essence of Diana, Princess of Wales, and thus, it is only fair that my presence receives recognition. I should have been included in the conversation, not William or anyone else discussing it. Keep in mind, the wife in question demands that others anticipate her desires, and failing to do so only intensifies her anger towards these disloyal people. Therefore, in and of itself, it might not be perceived as a disrespectful gesture. The reason William and Kate are often discussed is because they got engaged while in Kenya, coincidentally where King Charles happened to be present. Smartly rephrased, despite maintaining benign control over the two audience members, it is not true that he deliberately ignored the wife of one of them. However, from the perspective of the spouse, that is inconsequential. She will take it as a personal insult since she firmly believes that it is her entitlement to be discussed and acknowledged, specifically as the adored daughter-in-law. Regardless of the fact that she has not done anything to deserve such status, it is of no consequence. In her world, her significant accomplishments are disregarded, regardless of the efforts she has made to achieve them. Once more, the royal family is mistreating her despite her innocence. This article may attract attention from another supine publication, but if she finds out about it, she will definitely express her dissatisfaction to Harry, highlighting the mistreatment she has endured once more. This provides an understanding of the narcissistic mindset when it pertains to an unrelated article, with the narcissist mistakenly thinking it is relevant. This not only affects the narcissist negatively but also poses a challenge for them. That's it for the video. Please share your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to like and share with those interested. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button to stay updated with our latest content. Thanks for joining us, have a great day, and stay tuned for upcoming videos.